What's going on, everybody? We're jumping right into it today. I was a little late, so... Truth be told, I looked at the clock and thought, oh no, I'm late. Um, kind of shows you how busy I've been lately. Let me get some paper here. How's everybody doing today? So today is Fantastically Fun Friday, where we're going to just spend some time drawing together all that good stuff like that. Um, real quick, I guess, let's, let's uh, what's up? Hey, everybody. How's it going? So um, today's supplies, all you're going to need is uh, some markers and some paper, and that's pretty much it. We're just going to kind of do some drawing together, kind of talk through some ideas, stuff like that. If you have some ideas, um, feel free, put them in the comments. Um, let us know like any ideas that you might have. Let's draw them together, all that stuff like that. Um, it is Friday. Uh, and just to kind of give you guys a heads up, we've talked about it already, but I want to just make sure that I am communicating it well to you all. Um, this next week coming up, so one week from today, will be the last like live Facebook, like live Facebook um, show. We're going to be moving over to YouTube, uh, which will be uh, a much better show. I'm 100% positive of that. Um, I think it'll give me the ability to make much better art projects much more focused message um, and it'll give you guys a chance to like rewind and fast forward and and all that good stuff so it it's a, it's a lot more flexibility uh which will at the end uh really feed what my hope through all of this has been which is to make a show that works really well for you guys um, that's been my goal all along and i think that while facebook live is a nice format i'm not i am not a hundred percent sure that it works for something like this. Um, because there's lots of things where I would like to help make you better artist, you know, by telling you to pause here or go back and look at that again or stuff like that. I can't use those things when I'm doing something live. So um, while this has been a ton of fun, I, I have loved like doing all this with you guys, um, but we are definitely going to make a much better show uh, when we switch over. So just say hi to everybody what's going on hey Macy what's happening thanks yeah I have a hat I'll put a hat on cuz I you know I have no hair but when it starts to grow in it really looks like I have no hair so I just put a hat on easy easy cover up today right um, Nadia hey how's it going thank you so much I think you're awesome as well um, Olivia Cor candy corn playing soccer well I'm sure we can do those things so guys as you are coming in if you have some ideas like just drop them in there. Let's uh, let's figure out what we can draw today. If you have some ideas in there, all that good stuff like that. Let's do that. We're gonna have a lot of fun today, just making some stuff. Uh, we don't have any real agenda, like we don't have every Friday. Uh, Friday is just the time where we all just kind of come together and and talk about stuff. And and if you have something to share, put it in the comments. Feel free to put it in the comments if you have anything that that you like to share. Any cool, like, any kind of cool news? Do you have any, like, any cool things happening? Anybody, anybody's birthday? Anybody's birthday coming up? Things like that. This is the, the time on Friday. We can talk about all that stuff. Um, so let me write down some of these that we got going on here. Is... All right. So we got, we got a dog. We got a unicorn. We might combine some of these together. I saw a co candy corn playing soccer. You guys like soccer. I always see soccer in, in the comments. Everybody likes soccer a lot, apparently, huh? It's funny, because when I was a kid, soccer was not a big sport. Like, there wasn't a whole lot of soccer. Um, when I was a kid, it was baseball. Baseball during the summer was the big thing, um, and then you know, obviously football in the wintertime, but that's, you know, and, and, and basketball. Those were like the, like the big three ones. It wasn't really a whole lot of like, there was definitely no hockey, um, and very little soccer where I grew up. So, okay. So let's, let's start out the same way we always do. Let's get that mindful minute in, right? Let's take a second just to remind ourselves of a couple of things. It's really important guys. I, you know, I know that this might kind of seem cheesy or, all that stuff like that. I'm well aware of that, but 
there's also a, a lot of importance into taking a second uh, out of your day to feed your brain, right? To help your self-esteem, to tell yourself good things. There's nothing at all wrong with telling yourself that you're awesome, right? Um, I think that so many times we get worried that we're, if I tell myself I'm awesome, then you know, I have like a big ego or a big head and I come across like a jerk and all those things like that. But like the truth is, is like you can't be, you can't feel awesome or like, let me rephrase. You can't help others feel awesome if you don't feel awesome about yourself. So I just want, this is why we do this. Um, so the mindful minute, I just want you to take a breath in, take a breath in. And then you can say this either out loud or to yourself, totally up to you. Uh, just say, I am me. I do matter, and I am super fantastic. Those are things that you just got to tell yourself whenever you're struggling, because we all do. Sometimes days, man, sometimes it just doesn't work, you know, and sometimes no matter how hard we try, it seems like we can't get anything done right, or we are always messing up. And it's really easy to fall into a pattern where you think that there's something wrong with you if you make a mistake. But that's not true. We all make mistakes. Things happen. You're not going to know all of everything. And that's perfectly fine. So uh, we're going to also do our scribble doodle. If you're new to the show, simple. Scribble doodle means you make a scribble. There is nothing to it. Just scribble anything, okay? I spin mine. You don't have to spin yours if you don't want to. You can. And then from that spin, you're going to look at what you can make from this. Now, the key is this. You're looking at what this stuff could be, not what it is. Right now, it just looks like a big blob, right? But if you use your imagination, you can turn it into other things. That's what we're going for. I want you to see what it could be, not what it is. So as you start to doodle on yours, you don't have to follow along or wait for me. I want you just to start drawing along with me here. And our goal for this is just to make something, okay? We're just really concerned about making anything here. Because the key is in the making, right? Because it's super easy just to get stuck in thinking I can't do anything with that and I'm not creative and I'm not good enough. But if you look at this, before I started, we all saw it, right? It was just a scribble. But then with a couple things, all of a sudden the scribble takes a different shape and it starts to become something, right? Same as yours with maybe adding an eye or adding a couple things to it. Your scribble became something. And by the way, your scribble does not have to be a thing. Your scribble could be more scribbles, right? You could do something. Um, since it's Friday, I'm going to show you guys a couple of things that we can do. Like let's say on your scribble doodle, you have... A scribble like that. Now here's the beauty. Watch what happens if you have a different color and you add another scribble on it, right? It starts to take on a different world, right? Now when you're scribbling too, here's another thing. Think about the way you feel. If you're feeling angry, how does that scribble go? Does that scribble nice and flowing or is that scribble like this, right? It's a scribble right? So it's a great way to kind of get out a feeling to things like that. So as you're making these things, you could always, if there's an emotion that you're wanting to portray, like maybe like happy is like a free flowing shape, right? There's something about happy that just feels like a nice flowy line, right? Excited could be like maybe the lines are a little bit up and down, a little different. Maybe you can like say like, you know, if it's sad, maybe the lines are, you know, it changes. Just like anything else, you can express yourself in a lot of different ways. You don't have to just always make a thing into, you know, it doesn't have to be artwork in terms of what you think of it being, which means it says, well, the only way that I can make it art is if it like ends up looking like, you know, somewhere along the line, I added a face to it, right? Now, all of a sudden, because I put that face in the middle, 
now it's considered art. That's not true. Like sometimes art could just be in the making of it, right? Sometimes art could be in expressing yourself. Sometimes art comes in a lot of different forms. It could be something as simple as writing, right? You know, getting out paper and just sitting down and like if you're having a bad day, um, writing those things out. Like that's that that's such a great way to do it. Like learning how to like if you're having a happy day, writing that word, happy. And as you're writing it, you guys can totally do this with me if you want. But as you're writing it, here's the key. Think of what makes it a happy day. As you're starting to write these things out, like what about your day so far has been happy? Like why would you think that, right? Because here's what's kind of cool about your brain that you might not know, is your brain doesn't know if that happy feeling you're feeling is actually happening right now or if it's just made up in your head. It doesn't understand the difference between make-believe and reality. So that's what you can do is when you're living a happy moment in your life, your brain doesn't know any different, right? Your brain just thinks it's having a happy experience. It's firing all of this chemicals and all these different things that are making you feel happy. So if you're having a sad day and you keep thinking about you're having a sad day, don't be surprised when those days feel like they just keep getting sad, right? Start to a great way to start to change the way that you think is to start to grab a hold of that stuff. Start to um, think, you know, and, and I'm not saying that every day has to be happy. That's not true either. W what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to help you guys understand that you can express yourself in lots of ways. But it's a really cool habit to get into is to start to become aware of how you're feeling. It doesn't matter how old you are. Um, it doesn't matter if you're mom and dad listening to this right now or a kid. But when you start to write certain things and you think about, like, if I think sad, right, and I'm writing that word, and I start to think of all the things that I've ever been sad about, then I get stuck and sad, right? I could get stuck there thinking about all that stuff. And those things could have happened a long time ago. But because I thought about them, it becomes real again in my brain because my brain doesn't know the difference between. So it's a great habit to get into, guys. Sorry to go on a little extra there. But um, it's a really good thing to get in the habit of if, you're, if you find yourself ever stuck. You know, I want you guys just to, like, remind yourselves of those things. You know, hey, I heard on Wonder Friends that if I'm feeling like, why am I feeling sad like four or five days in a row? Maybe it's because all I keep thinking about is all the sad stuff. And if I take a chance and I try to think about happy stuff, is there an opportunity to change that? And I think that is what I'm going for when I'm helping you guys with this stuff. So just give it a chance, right? Who knows? If it works, you'll be like, OMG. My mind is blown. I never knew until now. All right. So we got candy corn playing soccer. Let's let's take a shot at candy corn playing soccer. I'm going to use, I'm going to use this big fat marker with this one because I think that sounds like the right thing. And I'm going to turn it up and down. And candy corn is kind of like just a shape like this, right? I think we all can draw that shape. But here's the cool part. If you've ever had candy corn, sometimes there's melty ones and there's half ones and there's all different wonky shaped ones. So whatever shape you use here, it's going to be candy corn. Now, the part about candy corn that I definitely know helps it become candy corn is, uh, you know, are those like three, like those three separate lines. That's the key, if you ask me, uh, in making the candy corn kind of thing. Let's put some eyeballs on here. All right? And you can totally do, if you want, um, to make this a boy or girl, uh, up to you. Whatever you want to do to make it that way. Um, you know, I, I don't really have a, a set way that I think, you know, there's ways in cartoons that makes a boy and a girl kind of thing. But, you know, you can totally do it the way you want. I think the one thing I would avoid is like, like hair on top because then it kind of looks like a carrot, right? Um, and then... Put some eyebrow, eyeballs in the middle there. Put some bros up top, right? Give your, give your eyebrows any kind of shape that you want there. Um, you can even make them like 
looking up. I can make that bigger since I kind of messed up. I can make it look a little like he's looking up, right? And I can do that because I want to put a soccer ball up there. And I can, if I put little dot lines, Now it's like the, the ball has bounced off its head, right? And then give it those. Soccer balls are so hard to draw, guys. Like they really have those like weird shapes. And I am not, I'm not good at that. I, oh, see, I just totally messed it up. I'm not good at making that soccer ball kind of look at all. But guess what? It's okay. That's like the, this is like the worst looking soccer ball. Um, like it just does not, it does not look like a soccer ball to me. It kind of looks like, um, it's like a soccer ball that somebody like dripped into like some weird paint or something and it's got too much on it. So, <laughs> but you know what? It happens, right? No big deal. Uh, and let's draw a mouth on here. I'm going to make the mouth like kind of big on it because like it seems fitting, right? Be super, super happy about that. Um, one of my favorite numbers when I was a kid and I played sports was the number eight. Um, I played a lot of baseball and number eight was like one number that I really liked because my one of my favorite players uh, was number eight. Um, so I could do that, put that number on there. If you have a favorite number, put it on there. If you have a name, like everybody else does, um, put it on there. Put your initial if you want. You know, I know soccer players have like, sometimes they have like those little, like, I don't know, are they called symbols? I'm not really sure, like little symbols on their chest or, or something like that. Uh, you can add those kind of things. Um, if you want to put like, we could put like a shirt on them and you can do that just by kind of putting like little triangles on each side. And then you can put some arms up, which is, just put some like little balls and put some sticks sticking out of there, right? They don't have to be like detailed hands because the last time I looked like candy corn did not have hands, but maybe, maybe, never know. Um, thank you, thank you, Macy, that is very nice of you. Um, and let's do, let's put some feet on it, right? Just put some feet. It doesn't have to be anything special. And if you wanna if you wanna put some shoes, you just put like a little bump up on there. Those are kind of shoes. And you can put some lines across. Just like that. That's just a fun way to do that. Now, now right now it kind of doesn't look like candy corn. I think we'd all agree with that right now. It doesn't look like candy corn. But you do know that if you take those two colors right there. We can definitely make it look like candy corn pretty easy. Now I don't know. I don't know for sure if there is a. Um, a I think if I remember right, it's orange, white, and yellow. I think is like how it goes. So the yellow would be the tip of it. I think. But you know what? If you want to change it, like I'm not going to judge you or think anything different. You, you can you can do in the middle. White's in the middle and the tip. Oops, I did it. See, I did it wrong. So white is in the tip, but that's okay. White is in the middle on mine. So I don't eat, I don't eat very much uh, candy corn because if I do, I will fall asleep because now that I've gotten older, candy makes me fall asleep, which makes me sad because I, I'm a sugar junkie. I like sugar. All right, so then I got that, and I could totally do that. That uh, I'm gonna do. Look at this. I'm gonna do my number eight in two different colors. I'm gonna do it half orange and half yellow. All right, very cool. You can do that too if you guys want. Have any kind of fun with it you would like to. Macy, you were a very smart kid, that's for sure. You don't have to be perfect. That is a great, great example right there. Is wasting your time being perfect is 
just that. It's a complete waste of time. Um, there's no such thing as perfect, guys. The quicker you can learn that at your young age, the quicker you can learn that. And then here's the key. Don't forget that. Um, the better off you're going to be. Because there is so much. It's a trap that adults fall into that we're always looking for it to be perfect. And if it's not perfect, then we won't try. Um, and that is just turns into a huge waste of time. So don't forget that, guys. Always remember, you know, it's easy to talk about all this stuff all the time, right? It's easy to, it's easy to kind of say things like, you know, uh, about being, not being perfect and giving it a try. But the hard part is always kind of, you know, bringing it into your world and living by it. And those types of things are really going to help you guys. So you guys are well on your way, though. Like, you guys are super smart. Um, that's, that's what's the beauty of you guys. You guys are all so smart. And you've already got so much figured out. And you're going to grow up and be these awesome kids that have got all this stuff figured out. Okay, so we have uh, somebody else suggested a dog, a unicorn, and dog and pizza. Now my question is, is there a way? Well, I know there is that we can do a dog-unicorn-pizza combo and do a big, old, weird character, okay? Let's do a big, giant, weird character of a dog pizza. So, all right, let's write this down. And we're, because we're gonna have to come up with a name for this. Let's come up with a name. So we have a dog, a unicorn, and pizzazz, pizza. So, dog a corn is a, nope, that doesn't work. Diz a corn, I don't know. How about you guys start thinking about a name for this uh, and we can combine it all together. But we're gonna try to make a dog unicorn pizza. This could be interesting. So as you're doing this, I want to take you through the idea of like when you start to create a character, um, things that will help you when you do this stuff. If you think of dog, for me, some of this stuff, and you might have something different, I think of like a tongue, a tail, right? Ears, like maybe a nose, right? Those are things that I think of when I think of a dog, right? And then for a unicorn, obviously is the horn. I think that is the number one, right? I think that if we can all agree that the unicorn horn is definitely the one thing that makes a unicorn. Maybe the other one would be like the hooves, right? Uh, could be another one, but it's really all based around the horn and magic, right? Sparkles. And then pizza, I think of like a triangle. I think like pepperoni, right? So the circles. Um, because you really can't like tell the difference between like the you know, cheese. It's kind of just like blobby stuff on there. But like things that you could really make it as a pizza would be like pepperoni, stuff like that. So if you start to want to create characters and you can take these things, you start to you start to be very specific of what makes them stick out in your brain. And here's the key. If it sticks out in your brain, it's going to stick out in somebody else's as well. So as long as you make sure that like you have a tongue and a tail and maybe like some ears on it, people are going to get that it's a dog. The same thing. You put a horn on it, everybody's going to get that it's a unicorn and pizza is really going to be around that triangle and the uh, pepperoni shape. So people will get all that stuff. So um, that's what we're going to start off of. So let's let's build this, shall we? Um, let's see. Let's make... Maybe sideways is the right way to go. It's the right way to go with this one. Um, and then we can, uh, yeah, let's see. All right. Let's turn it that way. All right. All right. All right. All right. Uh, I think I got it. I think I got it in my brain. All right. Here we go. So I got my paper sideways. The unit dogs. Are, that's a pretty good one. That's pretty good. All right, so let's draw, let's draw it on its side. Let's draw this triangle shape, right? And then let's put the pizza crust 
And you know what that is? Check it out. It is a hot dog, right? That's all it is. It's a hot dog shape, okay? You've drawn hot dogs before, guaranteed. Same sort of thing here. And then we're going to put, let's do a triangle here on the end. And then let's do, let's put that horn on there, just like that. Okay. Now we have a nose is one thing that we thought of. So if I put on the end here and I draw an oval, plug it in, it definitely has a nose type of shape, right? And we said ears. So dog ears can go a bunch of different ways. I'm gonna draw two that go like that. So up, they're basically like feet, but flipped upside down. And I can draw them. If I don't color them all the way, it kind of gives a cool little texture to it. All right. And then let's put some, uh, let's put some pepperoni on it. What's your guys' favorite thing on pizza? Is it pepperoni? Is that whatever? Is that what you guys are into? And then let's put a face on there. We can do that just by putting some ovals. Okay. Now, I'm gonna draw a little smiley like that. And then we said also we had ears, tail, tongue, right? And I can do that really simple by putting out a tongue out here. Like maybe this guy is so excited about being a pizza dog that he's like ready to eat himself because like he's delicious. If I put some dots on there, put some like little dots on this pepperoni and it gives us that pepperoni look, right? And if you want, if you put some little blobby shapes, that just kind of shows that it's like pizza. It doesn't have to be anything special. And you can put some little dots on the crust if you want. Okay. Now we had a tail, which makes a dog, right? And we can put your tail, I'm going to put mine like right here, I think is a good spot. You can put your tail anywhere. And by the way, if you want to put a different kind of tail in there, you can do that too. Oh, am I going too fast? We are making a, Molly, we're making, let me get it over here, dog pizza unicorn. Or, Macy came up with a good name for it, it's a unidogza. Um, you're missing some? So we had our triangle shape, we're gonna draw our pepperonis around there, we put our horn on there, we, we're gonna put our tongue on there, all that good stuff. You can put some eyebrows on there if you guys want. And then we can put some legs on there. And you can kind of do some legs like, <laughs> like that's funny. This looks, that looks so weird. <laughs> I don't think like, <laughs> it, what do you guys think? That that it, it definitely is a unicorn pizza dog, but I'm not so sure that how would he walk? Like it, he would like I think he'd step on his tongue. Um I think is the first problem. I think that um his nose would probably fall off and he could probably hear from like I don't know around the world because those ears are so big compared to his body. Like his ears, he's like giant ears that could hear everything. Um, that's funny. <laughs> so, you know, you can color this with me. Like we can color it, have fun with it. That's the goofy part about this stuff is like, uh, you can do this. So let me use this as a good teaching thing for you guys. So. This is a great example of how I, I go about creating characters. Okay. Now, do I think that this guy is perfect? No. Do I care? Not really, right? Um, it's, it's, it's okay. It's not great. It's not bad. Whatever. Now, here's the key. So when you're doing these things, 
Now, if I was to write a story about that, let's say I really, really, really wanted to write a story about pizza dog, unicorn pizza dog, or unidogza, right? If I wanted to write a story about this, so here's like what I do. As a character designer, right, which is what I do when I start writing stories, I design the character, I create the character. Um, I would start here probably, and I would draw this, and I would say, does this work? And I would say, probably not. But then I would use this and I would set it aside and I would start to take the parts that worked about this and start like, I really think that that kind of, that triangle kind of shape for it. It really kind of worked up until I put these front feet on and I put the feet on, it worked fine. So maybe like somehow it's, it's fixing this area on the next try, right? And I change the way it looks. So like, for example, I'm gonna show you guys real quick, just so you can see, I'll leave this right here so you guys can see this. But if I were to like redraw this thing like right away, I'm not gonna reinvent anything because I'm trying to get it better. As I would draw the same sort of thing again, I would make the ears smaller. I'd maybe angle the horn a little bit, right? And I put the other ear back here. Make them smaller, right? They don't have to be gigantic. You know, I would put maybe like a smaller nose on it. I could still put my ears here and put my thing here and put the tongue here and do all this stuff, right? And put all the same stuff and maybe a tail, right? But then I can like change the, uh, the legs in a different way, right? And then it starts to maybe become a little bit better. But even then I go like, I don't like that. So I kind of keep drawing it over and over and over again and then that's kind of the way it goes. And then sometimes you just flip it upside down. You're like, okay, well, maybe it doesn't look like that, but instead it like looks like this. And I add some of this here and I do this here and I give it pepperoni eyes, right? And then I start to change it and I put a tail on it here and I add some stuff here and I do all this stuff. And now the same character starts to change a whole different thing, right? You went from this to this. This is how you start to create stuff. So when you guys are working on all these things that we're drawing, I want you to like really like I want you to to go beyond, right? Really and I see all of you doing it. Like I've seen some of the pictures that you've you've sent me, some of the pictures that your your moms or your parents have sent me. Like go beyond. Like my goal of Wonder Friends is to introduce you to these ideas in hopes that you'll take these ideas and run with them. And you'll start to do your own stuff with them. And you'll start to push things and you'll create things and you'll do stuff that will surprise yourself that's my goal for you all of you is that you start to make things that make you really go like oh my goodness i can't believe i made that like i did that right and that is so cool to be able to say uh to yourself that like you know you did that like you made that um and i think that sometimes we forget that and we get stuck on that part of wanting it to be perfect um, because that's the way that we were taught, right? Sometimes we were always taught that it always has to be this way, but when it comes to this stuff, it doesn't. Um, so we're going to draw like a, a little combo thing again. We're going to stick with the unicorn family. Um, and we're going to draw somebody afterwards yesterday messaged me and said, Oh, it'd be really cool if we did like a unicorn fish. And I thought that seems kind of funny. We've not done a unicorn fish before. So let's do one. So let's do the same as we do, right? Let's get that unicorn horn on there. Now, the unicorn fish, uh, you know, you can totally have some fun with it. You know, we can do some shape like that. Maybe the unicorn fish has like a weird bottom lip. I can make the bottom lip shape a little bit different. I want you guys to draw along with me here, not the same thing, but make yours, like, let's see what you come up with. I want you to really start to push your creativity a little bit. You can follow along with me if you want, but I want you to see how far you can take it. What kind of special things about this would be something that you would add to it? Um, if you were in my shoes and teaching how to draw, how would you do it, right? And draw that. Like, don't be afraid. Step into that thing. And I don't want you to worry about it being good. 
because it's probably not going to be, and that's okay, right? The same as mine is not going to be good. The reason why mine looks like it's good is because I have practiced so much, right? But I promise you that when I get done with it, you may think it looks great, but I'm not going to think it looks great. So it's all about who looks at it and their point of view and their, their choice, right? So that's okay. If you're happy making it, that's really all that matters. You should really, when you're making these things, be happy with what you've created. You aren't making it for other people. You're just making it for yourself. And if you're happy doing it, like, I mean, that's, that's all that matters, right? Do more of the things that you love to do and you will find all kinds of things will change for you. So if you want to do stuff like that, like a shape, like a tail, well, all that is, just to kind of break it down for you, it's just a half circle, okay? Half circle. The other half is just a stretched out S. That's all it is. It looks complicated, but it's really not. Half circle, half circle, stretched out S, okay? That's all that is. Any of those things like that, if you've drawn any sort of fish, fins, it's always half circle, weird shape like that, half circle, stretched out S this way, right? That's what it is. So same thing. Now I could have my fin on top. You put some lines on there, right? It's a great way to show that it's a fin. If you put some lines, right? You don't have to do a ton of them. You could put like a little fin like that. Like maybe it's got like a little, little stubby fin. It's a little bit different, right? You could draw inside of the mouth. Inside of the mouth is the easy way, right? We just draw like a little line here and make that little bump for like the tongue area. Because fish do have tongues, right? Now for the eyes, you can do a couple like that. I can maybe put some, put a little couple eyelashes on there. And I can do some, some sparkles. Cause the unicorn fish. I could do some, remember we talked about before, if I'm making bubbles, Easy way to make it look like bubbles is if I draw one circle and I overlap one, right? And then you put a little one next to it. Those make bubbles. Those look like bubbles, all that good stuff like that. Now, if you want to put some dots on it because it's a magic fish, you can do that. Stripes. Any kind of thing you guys want. Um, I, want you to, I want you to really have fun with this. You have baby birds, Molly, or there's, is there a nest at your house? That's pretty cool. So as you guys are making these things, remember if we wanted to show some fish in the background, we can do like these little guys back here. That shows that whole, right? It shows us all the special things. You can do like seaweed. All this stuff like that. Have some fun with this, guys. Really start to push what you can do. I want you guys all to like not be concerned about just making the same things I do, but how would you do it? Like, what would you do if you were in my shoes and how would you change it different? This is how I taught myself how to draw things when I was a kid. I found things that I really liked to do and I would trace them and I would learn how to draw them. And then once I learned how to draw them, I would learn how to do it myself in different ways. So if there's something that you're trying to learn when this stuff like this, you know, it's one thing to follow along with me, which is fine. Nothing wrong with that at all. If you want to just follow along, I'm completely happy with that. But if you also want to learn how to start to become a better drawing person, drawer, artist, right? Cartoonist, whatever you want to call it. Um, Take some of the stuff that we're doing and be like, all right, well, that's how that went. But now here's how I'm going to try it. 
And sometimes your try isn't going to be good, right? And it's going to not look the way you want it to be. And you're going to think like, oh, no, like I messed it up. And you probably will. And that's fine, right? You're, you're not going to get it right the first time. Um, nobody does. But the key is, is to figure out like once you did it, like what was it that you liked about that? Start there and do that. I haven't seen very many baby birds. I've seen uh, today when I went for a run, I saw a bunch of geese, like the Canadian geese uh, with their babies. And I thought for sure that I was going to get uh, chased with, <laughs> chased by them because, you know, those, those mama geese are very, very protective of their babies. So they were like super cute um, little baby geese. But I haven't seen any, like, seen or heard very many, like, little baby birds yet. So see how I did there? I combined two different colors, right? I did half of it with my green highlighter, and I took my blue highlighter, and I blended it together, right? You can kind of see it there. So that's a cool way to get that cool effect, right? Because this is a magical fish, right? And it can do the same kind of thing with, like, the... the uh, purple I can or the pink this is pink so I can do like half of it and then I can take my highlighter that's a different color and I can go the other half so you get that cool little effect like that right because if this is a magical fish like it is then it's definitely going to look different I think we can agree with that so I can kind of do the same kind of thing with Just like that, right? Right? You get that cool effect, right? It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I think for me, it kind of blended a little bit, a little too light with that highlighter. So if I go back over it now, it kind of changes things out a little. Right. So you get this kind of cool look to it. Have some fun with it. All that good stuff like that. Let's see what color could I make its body. If I put this purple in here, I bet it'll look kind of cool. So you can have fun with this, guys. And if you want to, you can always like take, you know, this one fish and then do another fish and do a different one and do a different one. And you can keep combining different types of fish together and you can kind of create your own little world of all these different things. And as you create them, you could start to create personalities of the different types of fish, right? And think about like any sort of thing that you like, uh, if you have a favorite cartoon or anything like that, there's always like one, like there's always typically like one character that is like, you know, the hero right? The person it's like the show's about or, you know, the, the main thing like SpongeBob, for example, like SpongeBob is the hero of the show. Um, that's what everybody likes, right? And then you have all these other parts of the show that make it up. There's the, the evil guy, you know, Plankton, right? You get the goofy guy, which is like Patrick. There's all these different parts that make up characters. So as you're starting to write these things, and you're creating these characters, you could do the exact same thing for yourself, is you can start to make like some sort of like assessment of the characters in your world. Like what would they be doing? Like what would be their thing? And you start to have some fun with it. And then the bubbles change there, right? You get that cool little bubble effect. And that's like a unicorn fish what's up holly thanks for checking in so it's like our, our unicorn fish we could throw in some like shadows if you want underneath All right great way to do that stuff like that have a lot of fun with it and i could totally do a lot more with a bunch of different colors but you know i'm really kind of sticking to colors that i think that we all have you know at our disposal so you can you can do all this stuff, and you guys don't have to use markers when you're coloring these things. You can use crayons. Crayons blend really well. Markers work really well for the camera, so that way you can see them fine. So there we go.
Unicorn Fish. Oh, make sure you sign your name on it so everybody knows who made it. Got a signature on there. All that good stuff like that. All right, we got time for one more drawing here. Let me get a new piece of paper. You guys get a new piece of paper. Or if you want to keep coloring that, that's fine. You can always go back and rewatch this part if you want to. Well, Molly has a bird by her house, so let's draw a bird. We'll draw a couple birds, because there's a bunch of different ways that you can draw birds. So the first bird could be very, very simple. And it's going to be just a circle. And then an oval. Just put like the number 11, right? You can put a little triangle. And his feathers are just like little, this is like a W kind of thing. And a tail. Those legs, all the legs are, This right here. This is a stick down, a V, and one stick out. That's it. Just like that. If you want, you can do something like this, kind of on the front, which shows like little feathers in the front. And some bros. If you want to put some bros up there, you can do that. Ooh, Robin Birds, those are pretty. Okay. And then there's another one that we can draw that has like, if you draw like a candy cane shape. And put that long V on it. And draw that line down. And I'm gonna kick it behind that one, okay? Then let's draw a straight line back here. and a half circle over there. And then let's make that line come over and meet here. Let's put one oval, two ovals side by side. Let's draw those little lines like that. And you can do stuff like this where they just like little feathers. Or if you wanna put different things on there, um, Totally up to you, but you can kind of put like a little smiley face on here, and that would be a shape that goes around like that. Now, do I know what kind of bird this is? Nope, I don't. Um, am I worrying about that? Not really. I think that you guys can make any kind of bird that you want, right? The, th the thing about, I don't think anybody would think that this isn't a bird. Um, you can be creative with those things is what I'm saying. Like you can even do something like a bean shape, right? It's a bean shaped bird. that's going to just have these little lines and he's sitting on the back of this other bird. Okay. And I can draw just a little W right there. And I can make a triangle and put like the number 11 there. Now all of a sudden, there's a bird on its back, right? Birds come in all different shapes, sizes, stuff like that. I can even do these things in the background. And you, those are still birds, right? So if we're creating a bird character, the same thing as we did with the dogs and stuff like that, what are the parts about a bird that you know it's a bird? It's wings, it's beak, right? You couldn't draw like a bird with like a human nose and then a beak. It, would, it wouldn't look right. You wouldn't say like, oh, that's a bird. You would say that's like a human bird. So while you're drawing things, don't, you know, you don't, unless you're really like, if your goal is to make like Molly has robin eggs, right? At her house. If her goal is to draw robins, 
I would say look up online. Like look up, you do a Google search of robins and then look at those parts of it the same as we did with our unicorn dog, right? Like what makes a robin look like a robin and start to figure that out and then start doodling around with it and start making those. That's the secret, okay? Is everybody wants to say that they can't draw, right? I'm sure you guys will hear adults say, I can't draw anything, or if you haven't yet, you will. Trust me, I hear it all the time. But the thing is, is that they're assuming or you're assuming or somebody's assuming that they can't draw before they even try, okay? Now, the big part is, is the trying part. And the reason why is it's scary. Doing something you don't know how to do can be kind of scary. It's even scarier doing something you don't know how to do in front of people. Um, but the key is to try maybe by yourself first and see what it's like. And then if it doesn't look so good, then you're the only one that sees it. But if you want to do it in front of other people, that's fine too. Like there's nothing, nobody's like telling you that there's only certain ways that you should do things, um, you know, to, to make these things look right. And if they are, they're wrong. Anybody can do these things and they look right or wrong depending on whoever's looking at it. There's no right way to any of this stuff. Um, you know, just look at any cartoons. They're all different, right? They're all like SpongeBob is a sponge, right? He's a sponge. The thing that you scrub your dishes with, that somebody had the idea to turn it into a character. And he turns it in and they add a voice to it and it turns out to be really fun and everybody loves it, right? You know, Patrick Star is a starfish, right? It's the same thing. There's no face on a starfish. Starfish doesn't live under a rock and it doesn't eat sandwiches and all that stuff like that like Patrick does. But you, you, it takes somebody that's being creative and they didn't really care about it looking just like those things and they added in their fun elements. And that is what's kind of cool, I think, about being a creative person. You can make all these things just different ways. You can fill this whole page up with different birds. You know, like this. This is just a circle. Just a circle. And I'm going to put like that kind of shape on it. Right? It's still a bird. Nobody would say that that's not a bird. And I'm going to draw one more coming in this way. Maybe this one's like, oh no. Like, these birds are all flying at me, and what do I do, all right? So those are the ways that we can have fun with that, guys. Make sure you sign your name on it when you get that all wrapped up. All right. And that, today you made stuff. Like, look at, today you made things, right? You made magic happen. You created something. I want you to stick your left hand out and pat yourself on the shoulder because you made something today. And that is pretty sweet. All right, guys. There you go. You did it. You survived another week. You are that much closer to being school done for the year. Maybe some of you are already done with school for the year. But I think that most everybody, from what I remember, uh, I think you're wrapping up. Or like this week is really close. Just a reminder, everybody, a week from today. So we still have all of next week. So a week from today will be uh, will be sh the last live Facebook sh of the uh, event, right? Or live Facebook thing will be uh, next week, next Friday. So one week from today. So I'll still be here Monday through Friday next week. But then on Friday, uh, it'll be switching over. Um, so that, that following week, it'll be just based on YouTube, um, but I promise you it's going to be a much better show uh, that you're going to be able to pause, rewind, all that stuff like that. I'll be able to stop and say, like, now go back and look at that again. I can really use it to help us make better art, help us understand ourselves better, help us, you know, get in touch with our emotions better, help us all those things, and that's the key to all of it. So, guys, I just want to remind you about all the books that I got. Uh, if you got some books that you haven't seen here, um, once the library opens up, I bet you that your library has them. Uh, 
love for you to check them out, tell your friends. You can also get them if you want to buy them. You can get them on Amazon as well. And then you can also find a bunch of them on my website. Uh, website there. Yep, there we go. And I got a bunch of free stuff on there. I'm sure that all of you have checked it out already. But if you haven't, there's a bunch of free things on there. All that good stuff like that. I want to just remind you guys all about the power of being the unicorn because you have the ability to sprinkle a magic on somebody else's day just by being you. You could take these drawings that you've made and share them with your, your neighbors, share them with your mailman, share them with the UPS driver, share them with everybody. Uh, it's a great way to just make somebody that maybe is having a hard day or a tough day, makes them happy, right? And guess what? It makes you happy as well. Doing good things for other people makes you feel good and it's really important that you're doing good things for yourself. It's really easy to be kind to everybody else, but sometimes it can be difficult to be kind to ourselves. Being kind to ourselves are the key to so many things. Um, just remind yourself that you are super fantastic. You are amazing. You are pretty awesome. Uh, I will see you guys. Thanks, Molly. Glad you like the hat. I didn't cut my hair today, so I decided to put a hat on. So I will see you guys on Monday. Have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you. Bye.